Hi friends, this is our second video for the science topic for climate, lesson one climate found on page 126 through 139. I'm going to start on page 134. I'm starting on page 134. The header of the new section is called climate characteristics. Climate characteristics. Can you predict what the weather will be next month or next season? There is no way to know exactly. You might be able to make a good guess though. We know what weather will most likely be like at a certain time and place during each part of the year. Scientists have gathered data that show that weather follows certain patterns. The pattern of weather conditions that occur in a certain area over a long period of time is called climate. A climate is usually described as average temperature and precipitation. Not all of the earth has the same climate. Each region of earth has its own type of climate. Earth's main climate regions are polar, temperate, and tropical. A polar climate is very cold and dry. The top picture on page 134 is a polar climate. A temperate climate is mild. The middle picture on page 134 would be a temperate. <clears throat> temperate usually has big differences between seasonal weather patterns. So that means they'll have an actual fall, winter, spring, and summer. That's like South Dakota. A tropic, tropical climate is warm throughout the year. The bottom picture on page 134 is a tropical climate. The main factor that determines whether climate is polar, temperate, or tropical is where on earth the place is located. So it's all about location, location, location. Reading check. Compare and contrast. What are the two main differences in the three climate regions? How are they similar? Again, we're going to take the words out of the question and put them in our answer. The two main differences in the climate regions are temperature and precipitation. They are similar because they are all determined by location top of page 135. The header is called the sun and climate. The sun constantly sends energy toward earth. This energy heats the earth's atmosphere, water, and land. Each of these earth systems heats differently. The difference differences in heating patterns affect weather and climate. Not every place on earth gets an equal share of the sun's energy. Areas closest to the equator get most energy. The equator is an imaginary line around the middle of the planet. It divides earth into northern and southern halves. The areas farthest from the equator, the North Pole and the South Pole, get the least amount of the sun's energy. These patterns cause climates to be more extreme near the equator and the Earth's poles. Identify, how does the sun affect climate? Again, we're going to use the words in the question put it in our answer. The sun affects climates by different amounts of sunlight hitting different parts of earth. That causes earth to heat 
unevenly. Top of page 136, there's a diagram of the sun and the earth. The top part says direction of earth's rotation and there's like a purple arrow and it shows how it's spinning. I wrote the top is summer. This is in the northern hemisphere because it's getting so much sun when it's tilted this direction facing the sun. The north pole is 90 degrees. The arctic circle is at 66 degrees north and we're going to talk about that in a minute. On the earth it says tropic of cancer. There's a red line that goes through the middle. That's called the equator. And the line underneath, it's called Tropic of Capricorn. And then the Arctic Circle. And again, that's the South Pole or winter. The header of page 136 is called, um, yeah, the header is called Latitude and Climate. Latitude is a measure of how far north or south of the equator a place is. Latitude is written in degrees north or south. Key West, Florida, for example, is about 24 degrees north of the equator or 20 or 24 and the little zero north or in. A location's latitude has a big effect on the climate, on its climate. In the diagram, the North Pole is tilted toward the sun. It is the start of summer in the Northern Hemisphere around June 21st. The area north of the Arctic, Ocean, Arctic Circle will get sunlight all day long. At the start of winter, around December 21st, this area will receive no direct sunlight at all. At the start of summer in the Arctic, it will be dark all day long in the area south of the Antarctic Circle. And you can see that it's kind of shaded so it doesn't get any sunlight. Seasons north and south of the equator are opposites. Infer. The latitude of the Arctic Circle is 66 degrees north. What is the latitude of the Antarctic Circle? Make sure you label your diagram. The latitude of the Antarctic Circle is 66 degrees south. Top of page 137, the header says the ocean and climate. About 70% of earth is covered by ocean water. The sun's energy warms the ocean water. As the water warms, it evaporates more quickly into the atmosphere. Winds then move the water over land. Eventually, the water falls as precipitation. This is why areas near the ocean usually get more precipitation. Lands near the ocean have milder winters and cooler summers than lands in the middle of continents. This is because water changes temperature more slowly than land. In the winter, the ocean is warmer than, than the land. In summer, the ocean is cooler than the land. Cause and effect. How does the ocean affect climate? Use the words in the question in your answer. The ocean affects climate by cooling nearby land in the summer and warming land in the winter. Quest connection. If you were a filmmaker, a film, if you if you were to film a movie near the ocean, what kinds of weather should you expect? The kind of weather you should expect will probably be cool and breezy. 
top of page 138. The header is Land, Features, and Climate. Mountaineers, people who climb mountains, must be prepared for constant changes in temperature as they climb. Higher elevations tend to be cooler, colder. Elevation is the measure of how high above ground something is. At sea level, elevation is zero. As the mountaineers climb up the mountain, temperatures get colder. The temperature at the bottom of the mountain might be zero degrees Celsius or 32 degrees Fahrenheit. At the top of the same mountain, the temperature might be negative 15 degrees Celsius or 5 degrees Fahrenheit. Tall mountains affect climate in, other way, climate in another way. Winds generally flow in the same direction. As wind moves toward a mountain, the air slow, slows and moves upward and over the mountain. The side of the mountain that the wind reaches first will get plenty of rain. The other side will get little rain. The reason is because the air cools as it moves upward. Precipitation forms in the cooler air. Draw conclusions. Suppose wind moves toward a mountain from west to east. Would the east or west side of the mountain get more rain? Why? The side of the mountain that gets more rain is the west side. The air there would move upward as it reached the mountain. The air would cool when it moved higher. So on page 138 in the picture, you can see I labeled it west and east. Lots of rain is on one side. There's a lot of trees on one side. And on the east side, there's little rain, so there's not many plants. Top of page 139, the atmosphere and climate. Without an atmosphere, Earth would not have a climate. Instead, Earth would be a ball of ice and rock. Certain gases in our atmosphere trap heat from the sun. The trapped heat warms Earth's land and water. It keeps temperatures on Earth steady so that living things can survive. Cause and effect. How does the atmosphere help heat Earth? The atmosphere will help heat the earth by having certain gases trap the heat from the sun. Lesson ch one, check. Number one, define. What is climate? Climate is a pattern of weather conditions that occur in a certain area over a long period of time. Number two, identify. What are four factors that affect climate? The four factors that affect climate are latitude, atmosphere, oceans, and land features. All right, friends, nice job. Kiss your brain. That was a lot of information, but really good stuff. Thank you.